As a boy, Gorse used to race white mice in his bath. Sometimes they used to drown. Their tiny pink little feet paddled furiously for quite a long time, and then they just gave up. Some people said that he was rather an odd child. I don't know about that. But odd things did happen to him. I know this for a fact. He was a bit unlucky in one or two ways, for example. His father, a not very successful commercial artist, died when he was ten. Nobody remembers him. His mother, he does not remember at all. He was brought up by his stepmother, who was generally regarded as a good sort, a phrase meaning that she had rather a lot of male followers after his father died. Well, she had started out as a barmaid. His stepmother regarded him as an encumbrance, so she promptly packed him off to a boarding school in Brighton. Rodney House was a beastly little place, but sometimes it livened up a bit. Which was nice. The West Pier, by Patrick Hamilton, adapted for radio by Alan Pryor. The story is set in Brighton during the summer of 1925. The West Pier, starring Michael Sheen, Alison Pettit, and Julian Rhine Tut. Episode one: The Handbag. Of course, as headmaster of Rodney House, I have been approached by the local constabulary on a somewhat delicate matter. It seems that there has been a complaint from a local girl that she has been molested. That is to say, tied up to a large roller beneath the cricket pavilion and left there for several hours. This assault happened last Friday. As Friday is a half day at this school, can I ask you to account for your movements on that afternoon? I should warn you that I am interviewing all boys in your form. Of course, have you anything to say to me about this matter? It is very unwise to say anything at all to a headmaster. It is like saying something to a policeman. They are both fearfully suspicious types of person, and in the event his friend Ryan, the handsome, innocent-seeming Ryan, and Bell, the form swat, did not say anything to cast suspicion on Gorse. Not that he had done anything suspicious, but once you get a bad name, well, you all know the rest of that. It's nice being all together again, isn't it? Please don't look so enthusiastic, Bell. You're supposed to be on holiday. Well, to tell you the truth, Gorse, I'm not much good at holidays. I don't really see the point of them. But they haven't got a point. That's the point of yeah. them. Except to take your head out of all those books you read, Bell. That's right, Ryan. Look at Bell's face. Deathly white. It comes from sitting in that varsity library all day. I find that an interesting thing to do. Unlike all this cheap and cheerful nonsense. Cheap music, cheap everything. I don't know why I came. Well, I call that gratitude. <laughs> After the trouble I've taken writing to you two, arranging digs, finding out the train times, all that. Now just look, look at this pier, full of life and gaiety, eh, Ryan? Music, sea, girls, wonderful sight, isn't it? Yes,、yeah, rather. Can't see any girls there. I'm awful with girls. I don't know what to say to them. And by the way, girls are nowadays known as birds, as in exotic plumage. Birds? Are they? I didn't know that. Gorse knows all those sort of things. Well, I'm not sure it's such a good notion anyway. I mean, what kind of girls are going to let us pick them up? The right kind, not at all like your sister, for example. Of course, I hope not. Ordinary little shop girls. That's what we want, old boy. I wouldn't know what to talk to them about. The idea isn't to talk to them, Ryan. They're not for talking to. No, well, I suppose not. But、uh, one has to say something, I suppose. I think it's a silly idea. All this myself.、Well, you'd rather be reading trashy newspapers about that Kenworthy murder case. Shame on you. Well, it's interesting. It's human nature, Gore. Really? 
Well, I wouldn't have thought you'd know the first thing about human nature. Look, 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 look. There are two of them coming this way. Birds. Where? Right, they're here. Doesn't look bell, you fool. Leave it to me. I'll break the ice. Stay here. Come over in two minutes, all right? Yep, yeah. all right, Gorse, whatever you say. Well, girls, here we all are. Nice and friendly, aren't we? May I ask, are you two on holiday? Uh, no, we're locals. We work on a sweet stall, the kiosk. It's along the prom. You're all on holiday, I suppose? Yes, yeah, just for the week. We're all staying at the same digs. It's Mrs. Dolbin's at home place. That's off the promenade. Do you come on the pier a lot? Quite a bit. It's nice to hear the band and look at the people. To peer at the people on the pier. What? Um, that's right. And did you see us peering at you? Oh, yes. We saw that all right. <laughs> the very nice pair we thought you were. Oh, did you? <laughs> Without a peer, in fact. Well, we can't give you a pair as a reward because they're out of season. And drunk delight of battle with my peers far on the plains of Windy Troy. Is your friend always like this? Don't mind him, he's quoting poetry, aren't you, Belle? Tennyson, to be precise. I used to know the brook off by heart. Ah. We did it at school. Did you? Uh, ah, yes, poetry. And Tennyson's your favourite poet, is he, Miss... Ah, I'm so sorry I didn't quite catch your name. I don't remember giving it. Ah, no, so you didn't, but you can now. Why do you want to know my name? Well, we must be sociable, you know. Well, it's Downs. Spelt with an E. And very nice, too. And what's your name, uh, Gertrude? Perks. And nobody calls me Gertrude. Not even me ma. No, I can see why that might be. So when your friend's in one of her downs, you perk her up. What? Sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favourite poet, then? Um, I didn't get your name. The name is Gorse, Ernest Ralph Gorse, known as Ralph, pronounced Ralph or Rafe, whichever you prefer. Do you girls smoke? No? You don't mind if I do? I don't think I have a favourite. Oh, yes, I do. He wrote a wonderful poem once. Now, how did it begin? There was a young lady of Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I'd better not go on with that one. No, I don't think you'd better. And who's your favourite poet, Mr Bell? Well, I, I flit from <laughs> flower to flower. You know, one day it's Chaucer, next day it's Milton, then Shelley, then Keats, then Byron, then Coleridge. But uh, my favourite is Wordsworth. Man can write such things as <laughs> Earth hath not anything to show more fair, dull... Would he be of soul who could pass by a sight so touching in its yeah, majesty? Yes, Bell, yes, the we city... all know. What about the immortal bar? No, I have, as a matter of fact, a collected work on me. Handy for the pocket, as you can see. <laughs> Extremely well thumbed. The lights on the pier are so pretty, aren't they? Yes, aren't they? How long are you here for? Only a week, I'm afraid. What do you do for a living? I work in the family firm. We're estate agents, actually. Oh, well, nice. girls, and... What are your plans for tonight? We've got to be buzzing off home. We've got to get up in the morning. We'll walk you off the pier, shall we? Yes, why not? That would be nice. I say, Esther, I wish I could get an evening paper. Mr Bell? Mm -hmm. Where do you work, then? Oh, I'm up at the varsity. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Where's Ryan gone? To get an evening paper. Oh, he's after the cricket scores. He's a keen sportsman, Ryan. Who is he? Seems very nice. Oh, he is. Nice is about the word, yes. Esther, do you go out anywhere? Dancing or anything? We work long hours. We usually just come on the pier. I say, I've got an idea. What about you and I having a cocktail at the Hotel Metropole one evening? A cocktail? At the Metropole? I've never even been inside the place. Well, then, make it a first time. Uh, what about tomorrow night? Well, all right. I don't mind, then. Then that's settled. But we've got to do it um, cleverly, if we want to be alone. And how do we do that? I'm with Gert. Whatever anybody else does, we'll meet at the Metropole in the lounge at 7.30. Well, we'll see, shall we? 
How much are the toffee apples? It's tuppence to you. I'll have one and a fragment stick of rock. Here you are. Five pence. Any change. You nearly finished that, have you asked? But you're killing me. I've had enough of work for today. Bars of rock get heavy as the day goes on. You know, just bars of iron now. Nearly half past. Five more minutes and we can go home. Walk your way back, shall we? Well, if you like. It's all right, I won't come in. <laughs> Nobody ever goes in your house, do they? I'll take that box. Give me a second. You know why. I don't like people. Well, even friends mm. coming in my house. It's all right. It's no crime to be poor, is it? And who ain't poor? It's no worse than our house. Couldn't be. Not a crime, I don't suppose. No. I just don't... Well, like anybody's seen it. I mean, since Dad died, we've had no money at all. With three other kids besides me, it's hard for Mum to keep the place tidy. Must be nice to be rich. Must be nice to be what they call comfortable. Like them boys we met last night. <laughs> don't suppose they know what it is to go with that. Who do you fancy, then? Fancy? Which one do you fancy? Who says they'll turn up tonight for a start? Fellas always turn up for you. The one they call Ryan. I think he's lovely. He seems nice enough, yes. Oh, but don't they all go on? Well, they're educated. I know, but all that poetry. And what about the other one? What about him? I don't know. Something odd about him. What do you think? Odd? In what way? Gerd? Hmm? I made a date with Gorse. What? We're going for a drink at the Metropole. The Metropole? Oh, he is clever. I'm sorry. You'll be on your own. That's all right. With your looks, well, it's expected. I ain't never been in the Metropole. I don't know nobody that has. You sure it's all right, me going off with him? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Means I'll get a shot at Ryan. Well, I think we're done now. We can shut up shop and get home. I must say, mm. they do a decent high tea in these digs. No, oh, sorry? I'll get from behind that newspaper, old man. More tea? Oh, no, no thanks. Uh... I will help myself to another cream puff, though. Hmm. You're coming tonight, aren't you? To meet the girls? Oh, I don't know. We've really. got no choice. We arranged it. You know, the spirit might be willing and all that, but... Oh, hey. Which really is a good murder in the paper. Listen. The prosecution alleged Kenworthy blackmailed this poor girl and then he strangled her. Bell, attention to business. Oh, well... I'll only get the ugly one, won't I? Gert or whatever her name is. Not bound to. It's up to her, isn't it? I don't want it to be up to her. I don't want her. Don't suppose she wants don't me. come along, old chap. And besides, there are only two girls and there are three of us. Well, that's true, I suppose. Look, you and Gorse go. I'm no good with girls. He's where is Gorse, anyway? Have you seen him? No. I don't particularly want to. No? Why? When we were in the fourth, Gorse took a torch out of my pocket and put it in another boy's pocket. We had a fight about it. Did you know Gorse did that, for absolutely sure? I couldn't prove it in a court of law, no. Yeah, you shouldn't say things like that, Bell, if you've no proof. I know Gorse did it. I know he did. But it was ages ago when we were all at school. Kids do funny things. I've never taken to him ever since. To tell you the truth, I, I was astonished when your letter came proposing this holiday together. If it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't be here. Gorse seems a pretty decent sort of chap to me these days. <sighs> yes, I know. I know he does. Uh, hello. <laughs> it's you, isn't it? Mr Ryan? Ah, oh, hello. Uh, hello, Gert. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's Peter. Well, Peter, where's your friend got to, then? <laughs> yes, Bell's not coming. I don't know about Gorse. He's, he's been out all day. He hasn't turned up yet, either, oh. actually. Where's your friend? Esther, isn't it? Uh, Esther can't come. Her mum isn't at all well. Esther's got to stay in and look after her. She told me to say uh, she's ever so sorry and she hopes she'll meet you all again, like. Oh, I, I see. What's the matter with her mother? Bad sore throat and a cough and uh, a temperature. Well, I'm, I'm very sorry. Uh, I wonder where our friend Gorse has got to. Yeah. He's late, hasn't he? Yes, ten minutes. Not like him at all. We ain't coming then, is he? Let's go on by ourselves, shall we? On the pier? Um, 
Yes, all right. Uh, let's, let's. Through here, I think. <sighs> it's a lovely evening, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really lovely, yes. Well, in fact, we've had a lovely summer <laughs> taking things all round. We have, haven't we? Really. Hey, do you like to play the football machines? Come on, let's play. Yes, yes, <laughs> if you like. Don't tell me you haven't played before. All you do is move this handle, eh? like this. I, I see. <clears throat> <laughs> ah, yes. Goal! I scored a goal! I scored a goal! <laughs> yes, yes, you you did, didn't you? Jolly good, jolly good, I must say. <laughs> oh. Another goal! I've won! <laughs> yes, yes, well done, well done. Get okay, a little practice. It's all the same to do with fellas. Um, uh, do you want a game? Not, not especially, no. Then, uh... Let's go along to the end of the pier, shall we? Here, where we're quiet. We can sit down, look at the prom and all the lights. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's nice and comfy in these shelters, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is right, I, I suppose. It's what they call a perfect night for love. Don't you think? Um, yes, I, I don't know, really. Don't you? Don't you feel the need for a bit of love when you're out with a girl in a shelter on the pier? Well, uh, no, <laughs> actually, not, not really. Well, I think. You're a bit cold, aren't you? No, no, I'm quite warm, actually, thank you. I don't mean cold in that way. Oh, then, um, then what? Well, don't you know I mean cold? Uh, actually, no. Yes, you do. No, 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 really, I don't. Well, shall I tell you? What I'm referring to is that you're not warm. Not warm. <laughs> warm in the heart. I say, you, you do have a curious way of putting things. Not warm in the heart at all towards poor little Gertie. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, I... <laughs> is that the time? I... I'm warm in the heart about you, you know. Ever since I set eyes on no, you. I'm sure that's not true. It is. Why would I say it if it wasn't? I don't know. You don't know much, do you? Not really, no, I don't suppose. It's her, isn't it? Who? You know. No, I don't. I'm ever so sorry I'm not pretty like her, I'm sure. You're very, very pretty, honestly. You don't mean that, you're just being polite. No, really, I'm not. You're after Esther. Why do you say that? <laughs> it's always her, they want all of them. Every time, it's sickening. Well, just because she's beautiful, that's it, isn't it? Well, uh, she is pretty, you know. Um... That's all you see, any of you. Still, you're handsome. Esther and you would look right together. Well, she don't think much of boys as a rule, but I bet she'd like you. Or when she got to know you. Do you really and truly think so? I really and truly do, yes. Well, I might start be getting along home. Oh, um, must you? I... Yes, I must. I really must. About Esther, mm -hmm. do you by any chance know, uh, well, um, her address, just in case we didn't meet again and I couldn't find her? Why should I give you her address? Oh, well, it's Over Street, 66 Over Street, near the station. Right. Anything else, Mr Peter Ryan? No, I, I don't think so. Well, uh, one thing, actually, is her mother really ill or, or didn't she want to meet me tonight? Of course her ma's ill. Of course, of course, yes, sorry, sorry. Just one last thing, I wonder, um... Would you give her a message for me? What do you want me to tell her? Would you would you ask her if if she could meet me? Where? What about the um, promenade just by the clock? When? Tomorrow? If her mother's better, same time? I'll tell her. Well, if that's what you want. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're terribly nice. Oh, don't be stupid, please. So sorry. Will you be coming along too? I don't think that would be a good idea, would it? Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, may I have your pleasure? Well, 
What's your tipple, Esther? I don't know. Um, Benedictine, is that all right? <laughs> Hardly. Two gin and it's, if you will. Certainly, sir. Sorry about the Benedictine. I've never even tasted it. I've heard other girls say it's a posh drink. Sorry. That's all right. No harm done. You'll have to tell me when I make a mistake like that. Benedictine is a liqueur. It's for after dinner. Oh. What do you do for a living? I'm something in the city, actually. Oh, I see. It's a nice tie you're wearing. Oh, <laughs> It's just an old school tie. Westminster, actually. All my people went there. People? Oh, your family. Well, I mean, what do they work at? Army. Nearly all of them. A dull lot, really. <laughs> my people are just ordinary, I'm afraid. The Colonel's Lady and Judy O'Grady are sisters under the skin. What? That's a poem too, isn't it? It's Kipling, actually. You go in for a lot of poetry, you and your friends, don't you? I prefer the poetry of natural things, like beautiful women, like you. Oh, don't be so silly, Ralph. Two gin and Italian, sir. Thanks. Well, bottoms up. Oh, Steady on, old girl. <sighs> it isn't lemonade, you know. <laughs> Lovely night, isn't it? Just sitting here. Time stands still. Yes, isn't it? Moonlight on the water, all that. You know, Ralph, I've got a conscience about the others. They must have waited ages for us to turn up. Uh, Ryan's not the sort to wait long. Curious chap, Ryan. How is he curious? He's very good looking, isn't he? What's his first name? Here am I taking you out, and all you talk about is Ryan. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't like just talking to people by their surnames like you all do. It's unfriendly. What's unfriendly about it? Well, I call you Ralph, don't I? And will little Esther give Ralph a kiss? Oh, that, that's a different thing, isn't it? Mm. Uh, please, that's quite enough, Ralph. Honestly. Uh, is that more comfortable? my arm round you? It's all right, I suppose. No, please. Now, I must fly. It must be late. Do you want me to see you home? No. I could... No. Why not? Well, I'd rather go by myself. Really, I would. Oh, very well. Have it your own way. But at least let me know when we're going to meet again. Well, I don't I'm know... I'm on holiday, as you said, and... Time flies. Uh, let's make it 7.30 tomorrow evening here on the pier, shall we? We'll have another cocktail at the Met or whatever. Well, all right, yes. 7.30 tomorrow, at the hour of the setting sun, just here. Au revoir, madame. Yes. Well, Ralph, I'll go off I'm on my own. Ta-ra, then. How did it go with you last night, with that Ralph fella? Oh, all right. I went home early, actually. Actually? Did you now? <laughs> I went home earlier. <laughs> that fella, Ryan, well, he wasn't interested in me. He was more interested in you. In fact, he asked me to ask you to meet him tonight at the clock, half past seven. Did he really? Yes, he did. Really gone on you, he must be. Well, don't look so pleased about it. Well, I am pleased. But I've already arranged to meet Ralph tonight. Oh, poor you. Well, what are you going to do, then? Good. I wonder, would you do me a favour? Before you ask, I'm not going to go in your place to either one of them. And that's that. No. No, I wasn't going to ask you to do that. What's the time, Esther? It is 7.30. Is that how fast? Yes, it is. Come, Esther. Ah, oh, there you are, Esther. And how lovely you look this evening. Oh, Ralph, look, I'm ever so sorry, but I can't stay. 
My mum's still not well. I'm ever so sorry. Oh, dear. What's the matter with her? She's got a nasty cough and a temperature and she's in bed. I'm ever so sorry. I don't keep saying ever so, for God's sake. What? Can't you at least stay a little while? I'll tell you what. I can meet you later, if you like. In three quarters of an hour, something like that. Where? Well, here. I'll be waiting. Then you'll be all right, won't you? Yes. Oh, and, and, and I'm ever so sorry, but I never thanked you for last night. It was a lovely evening, and thanks ever so. I do too, madame. The pleasure was all mine. Oh, well, goodbye then. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> ever so. Quarter to eight. Come, Lester, if you're coming. Hello? Peter? Ah, hello. Oh, I hope I'm hello. not late. No, not really, no. Oh, here I am, anyway. <laughs> yes, it's um, it's good to see you. And how's your mother? Any better? Mother? Oh, yes, she's not exactly right yet. That's why I'm terribly sorry, but I can't stay very long with you. Not tonight. I'm afraid I'll have to be home early. Ah, so, it's a very short meeting, isn't it? Well... Yes, I suppose it is, really. <laughs> then, may I see you again soon? I mean, properly. I'd like that. Very much. Really, I would. I'll tell you what. We might spend an afternoon up the coast. An afternoon? I work, you know. Well, don't you ever get an afternoon off? Every other Wednesday. I'm off this one. And we could have tea somewhere. Well, I I'd like to very much. That's tomorrow, then. Um, where should we meet? Uh, the West Pier? About 2.30? Right. Peter, will you do me a little favour? Why, yes. Yes, of course I will. Well, you know that friend of yours, Ralph? Gorse. Hmm, hmm, what about him? Well, I know you'll think it's funny, but please don't tell him you've met me tonight or that I'm going out with you tomorrow. Uh, but why on earth not? Well, I know it seems ever so funny and silly, but will you? Has Gorse asked you out, is that it? Well, something like that. But would you? Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> Anything you ask, naturally, but you are a funny girl. So full of secrets, aren't you? Look, um, can I walk you home? It's not too far. I know where you live. It's near the station. <gasps> and how do you know that? Well, I ask your friend Gert. She didn't tell me that. She knows that. Well, I'd really rather you didn't, though. Thanks ever so much. I must go. I'll see you 2.30 tomorrow outside the West Pier. Goodbye. Goodbye, Esther. My darling. Mister? You asked that 30 minutes ago. That makes it 8 o'clock, right, mister? Oh, take yourself off. You're a bloody nuisance. Cool. Blimey, you're in a bad mood, don't you? Oh, hello, Ralph. Sorry I've been so long. I'd almost given you up. It's very nearly dusk. Sorry. Have you been running? I I've... I've been walking rather fast. Hmm. Look, uh, let's go and sit in that little kiosk thing. It's out of the way, isn't it? Well, yes. If you like. Hmm. You are still out of breath, aren't you? Sit down and rest a minute. Yes, I am a bit. Sorry. Nothing to be sorry for. Well, how's your mother going on? She's up. She's much improved, the doctor says. I'm relieved to hear it. Yes. Well, it's nice at this end of the pier, isn't it? You're really all hot and bothered tonight, aren't you? Yes, I suppose I am, really. Yes, you are. Very attractive, though. Ralph, please... No, that there's, there's something I want to ask you. Yes. What now? You know your friend Ryan? What about him? Well, it, it might sound funny, but don't tell him we met tonight, will you? Why ever not? Reasons. Has he asked you out or something? Well, he did ask me to go out with him, yes. Did he really? Well, I'm not jealous of poor old Ryan, if that's what you mean. 
But tell me, be honest. Do you like him? Ryan. Yes, Ryan. We're talking about Ryan. No. Not really like. No. Well, that's all right then. That's absolutely fine. There. That was nice, wasn't it? Girls like Esther Downs, very simple, very beautiful girls, are often preyed on by evil young men. Sometimes they recognize these men, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes the young man who preys on women is the obvious one, the silken reptilian one, and sometimes he is not. Sometimes he wears an innocent, open face. To the Esther Downs of this lost world, a martyr to beauty and to poverty, any young man who seems to promise a life of gentility and romantic love would, in a sense, do. But Esther Downs, bless her, does not know enough of life to see evil when it is in front of her. Esther, is that all you're eating this morning? A slice of bread? Oh, I have to rush, Mum. I've got to open the kiosk and I mustn't keep Gert waiting. At least eat your bacon, my dear. Oh, I couldn't really, Mum. Oh. Well, the children will eat it if you must go right away. I must, really. I'll, I'll take a sandwich in my bag. Oh, no. That's it. I'll wrap it up for you. Here you are, dear. Thank you. And don't forget your bag, will you? Oh, Pop your sandwich in it. Oh, damn this clasp. It's broken off altogether. Oh, dear. Oh, I could cry. What could I do without a handbag? Well, you can take two pounds from you know where and get a new one. Going out with your posh new friend, it would never do. <laughs> Not to have a proper handbag, would it? Oh, I don't like to touch that money, Mum. You know that. We'll talk about that later. Oh, before you go, there's a letter for you. I nearly forgot. For me? Mm. Came this morning. Pop that in your handbag, too, and read it at work. I wonder who it can be from. Oh, well, I must rush. Bye, Mum. Bye. Now, then, children, there's bacon down here for you this morning. Esther's not eating hers. Oh, I've been busy this morning, girl. Been one of our fate, we have. Yes, it has been hectic. Hectic? That's one of their words, isn't it? Yes, I suppose it is, really. Listen, Gert, I want you to look at something. What's this? Love letter? One of them, is it? Read it. It's all in bits and pieces. Cut out of newspapers and stuck together to make a message. Funny idea. Look out for Ryan. I know him. Do not go out with him. He is dangerous. Take warning. Sign the world. Who could have sent this? I don't know. Who do you think could have? Well, I don't know what to think, do I? It's a lot of rubbish, this is. There. You don't think he's dangerous, do you? I don't. I think he's nice. Yes. You like him, don't you? What? I was just wondering who else knew about me and Peter Ryan. Apart from me, you mean? No, of course I didn't mean that. Didn't you? Are you sure you didn't? Of course I didn't, Gert. You know I didn't. Same as usual, Esther. Two gin and eggs, please. Certainly, sir. You're very quiet this evening. Am I? Sorry. Worried about something? Yes, I am a bit. I've got something to... Well, confess to you, Ralph. Um, what's that? I hope it won't make you angry. I'm sure it won't. Why should it? Well, you know when we made that first, like, appointment to go to the Metropole together? When we all first met on the pier? Yes. 
Well, Gert met Ryan that evening, and he asked her if he could meet me the next evening. And I don't know why, I suppose I felt sorry for him or something, so I, I thought I would meet him, just for a little while. And so I told a fib to you, saying my mum was ill. You saw him? Only for a minute, until I went back to you. Now he wants to go out with me again, and I don't know what to do. Oh, I've got myself into such a mess. Is that all? Is there anything more? You see what trouble one gets into if one doesn't tell the truth? Ralph, I'm just coming to the real point. Now I've told you about that. I got a horrible letter, if you can call it a letter. It was in the post this morning. A letter? What about? I've got it on me. It's in my handbag. Very interesting. But what do you think about it? I don't really know. But there are two things you can do. One is to put it straight into the waste paper basket and forget it. And the other is to take it to the police. I don't want to go to the police. Then destroy it. But what if it's true? What if there is something strange about Ryan? I mean, I'm not planning really to see him, but what if he sees me? talks to me or anything that i must admit is a very different thing do you know anything about him like this letter says well that's not a fair question if i did it wouldn't be right to tell tales about a friend would it you're my friend too aren't you i think it would only be fair to me i don't know about that esther you do know something don't you well no it's all rather difficult no it isn't i'll say this much there are were Rumours. At school. Of course, all that was a long time ago. What sort of rumours? Oh, just odd things. Things boys do. What? Did he steal something? No. Well, what then? You know, really, it's not the sort of thing I like to talk about. But you must. No, it's, it's not the sort of thing I can talk about. Tell me. <sighs> was it something to do with... What makes you think it was anything to do with sex? But was it? Go on, was it? Yes. I suppose it was. In a way. What sort of way? Oh, come on now, tell me. We're both grown up after all. Now you're going too far. It's not the sort of thing a gentleman discusses with a lady, is it? Could whatever it is make him dangerous? Let me put it like this. I think... Ryan thinks a little too much about sex. All men do, of course. I do myself. But Ryan... Look, he's no worse than most, I, I don't suppose. There, no, I, I've said too much. Do you think he's dangerous? And if you do, should I go out with him? I'm afraid I said I would. Do you? No, I don't think you should. Not after this letter. It's signed Wellwisher, and he or she may really know something about Ryan we don't. Now, let's leave the subject, shall we? I can't leave it. I've got to make my mind up about him. Well, you've been given my advice. Take it or leave it. What? But who on earth could have sent such a letter? That is a mystery. I agree. Could it be that other friend of yours? The one in spectacles? Belle? Did he know about Ryan and this sex thing? I don't know. Possibly. Then he might have done it. He seems to have got a pretty funny mind with all his jabber, jabber, jabber about poetry and all that. He doesn't seem the type, although one can never be absolutely sure with human nature, can one? It must be a low sort of person to do it. Send a letter like that. You're right. It couldn't be a gentleman. The whole thing looks sort of uneducated, doesn't it? Yes. Indeed it does. That's what makes me think it might be somebody of my class. Perhaps. <laughs> It's all very baffling, I must say. So, your advice is not to see Ryan again, even in public? Well, reluctantly. That's my advice. But if you decide to, I hope you won't tell Ryan what I've said about him. Of course I won't. Now, let's really change the subject, shall we? Yes, let's. To gin and Italian, sir, madam... Thank you, Ralph, for being so understanding. Oh. No, I won't see Peter Ryan. Probably never again. Well, that must be your decision, my dear. Cheerio. Chin, chin. Morning, Esther. You've left.
left yourself a minute or two extra this morning, anyway. Oh, eat your bacon and egg. It'll see you through the day. Let the kids have the egg. I can't face it, Mum. I don't want to criticise, but uh, you've got to be careful drinking on an empty stomach. It was only one gin and it, Mum. There's, a, there's another letter for you this morning, dear. An educated hand, I'd say. One of your new friends, is it? Oh, it's all right. What's the matter, dear? It's all right, Mum. It, it's a note. It, it's a note from a friend asking me to be sure to meet him. I didn't know if you'd come. I... Why not? Well, um, your mother being ill and, and all that. Oh, she's quite recovered now, you know. Good, has she? Good, good, good. Peter? Yes, yes. Did you write two letters to me? Hmm? Did you write a letter before your letter that arrived this morning? No, no, no. Uh, only the one letter. Why? Oh, nothing. Just something I thought of. This is nice. <sighs> we can sit on deck chairs sunning ourselves. I feel as if I'm on holiday. Have you ever been on holiday, Esther? I mean, away from Brighton? No need to, is there? No, no, I, I don't suppose so. I went to London once with Mum, just for the day. It was so crowded. Not like this. It's lovely, this end of the prom. <sighs> I'm glad you came, really. You know, I almost didn't. Why? Oh, I don't know. Didn't you want to? Oh, no, yes, I wanted to. I, I wanted you to. I, very much. I... You shouldn't do that. <laughs> Why not? It's, no, it's perfectly innocent. I'm, I'm only taking your hand. I don't know you well enough, Peter, for that, do well, I? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if it seems as though I'm rushing things. I, I don't mean to, but... Um, a lot can happen in a short time, can't it? On holiday. What can happen? Well... For instance... <laughs> one can get attracted, can't one... Esther, you see, um, hard to explain, uh, but there, there is such a thing as love at first sight, <laughs> isn't there? Is there? You know there is. Uh, you know the words of the old song, uh, I did but see her passing by, and yet I love her till I die. And <laughs> well, well, that's what's happened to me, that's all. Uh, well, I, I don't uh, know what to say. Really, I, I never suspected you thought that. Don't you like me at all? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. No, that's not the point. The point is, do you like me? I don't know. We've only just met. Well, Two days. Yes. Do you think if we went on meeting, you could uh, begin to like me? I'd have to know more about you, wouldn't I? There's nothing to know about me, really. I, I, I'm just an ordinary person, and I'm terribly in love with you. You can't be. No, but I am. I, I really... Well, say something, Esther, please. I... Let's just say I could want to know you better. Let's say that much. Under the right circumstances, that is. Esther, tell me. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else that you're in love with? I don't know that there's anybody at, at this moment. Then there is some hope, then. Esther, would you mind, really, would you mind if I kissed you? No. No, Esther, Esther, I love you, I love you, I really, I really do. Don't touch me, I said I'm sorry. don't. I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything, I... No, all right. Now, will you take me back? Yes, yes, of, of at course. At once, please, or I'll walk down the prom and get a bus no, on my no, own. No, I'll take you back. I'll... All right. I'm sorry, really, Esther, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, Esther... Which of you young gentlemen are you going to meet tonight? How do you know there's two of them? Wasn't born yesterday, dear. There's one takes you to the Metropole and buys you gin and its. Am I right? Yes. I've told you that already, Mum. Your face is all a bit, like, worried when you talk about him. I reckon he's a bit posh for you. And you don't know if you're good enough for him. I'm good enough for anybody. It's just manners. They have different manners from us. It's like learning a new language, really. Whatever it is, it upsets you. No, it doesn't. I'm learning how to be ladylike so I can go anywhere with Ralph. Ralph. Is that his name? So what's the other one's name, then? 
Well, there is another boy called Peter. He don't take you in the Metropole, though. Doesn't take me anywhere much, except on the pier. It's well, mm, he's all right. But he's not so e- exciting, really. But he's the one you're really taken with, isn't he, this Peter? I can see it in your face when you say his name, dear. Oh, Ma, <laughs> <laughs> you're so. What? You don't understand. So you did go out with our friend Ryan, against your uncle Ralph's advice. I thought I was making a mountain out of a molehill. I know how to look after myself, or so I thought. Oh, you did, did you? Oh, by the way, there's something I ought to tell you. And what's that? I got tired of telling lies, and so I told him I'd run into you. But that's still telling lies, isn't it? Because you didn't run into me, did you? I didn't do any harm telling him, did he? You don't mind, do you? Not in the least. I'm all for telling the truth, whenever possible. By the way, did anything happen? When? When he took you out. What do you mean by happen? You know perfectly well what I mean. Well, no, not really. He tried to hold my hand, but that's all. And did you let him? No. Did anything happen after he tried to hold your hand? What sort of thing? You know what I mean. Do you mean did he try to kiss me? Yes, that's what I mean. Yes, in a sort of a way, but I didn't let him, not properly. So he gave up, and we walked back to the bus. You know, I've thought and thought, and I'll swear there's nothing wrong with him. I just don't believe that letter. No, I can see that. Peter was quite gentlemanly, really. So, Ryan's a gentleman, is he? Well, well, well. Would you call me one? The gent? Yes, of course I would. Why do you say that? It's written all over you, isn't it? What is? You know, you've been to college and all that. You know how to talk properly, the way you dress, your manners. You were just born better than me, that's all. I'm not a lady. I try to be sometimes, but I'm not. Never will be, will I? Esther, I should say you are a lady, a natural lady. But it's a question of birth, isn't it? And where you're brought up. Is it? Well, how were you born? Who are your people? If you must go on about it, who's your father, for instance? My father was a porter at Brighton Station. If you want to know, he died of the consumption. I see. So you found Ryan a perfect gent, did you? I must say I did. More parfait than yours truly, would you say? What? <laughs> oh, don't be so silly. Of course not.、Uh, two gin and Italian, sir, madam. Won't you let me pay for a change? You shouldn't always be forking out the money, should you?、Uh, that wouldn't quite do, my dear. Thank you, waiter. Thank you, sir. I didn't mean that. I meant, well, wait until we got outside, and I could give you something then, like towards the expenses. I was rich as all that. <laughs> not rich, nor nothing like it. No, but I've got a little bit put by. Really? Yes, really. In fact, I've got quite a bit put by. What do you mean by quite a bit? Just because I'm a shop girl doesn't mean I'm on the parish, does it? <laughs> all right. Pounds, shillings, or pence? Pounds. Let me guess. Five? No. Less? No. Ten. No, fifteen more. <laughs> you, you see, my mother had my dad insured, and when he died, she gave me the money for myself. I have to keep it till I get married, she says. Then I have something to start my life with. Of course, it's terrible knowing it's there and not breaking into it, because well, we're poor and short most weeks. There's only my money and what she makes sewing, but we don't break into it ever. I would often, but she said she never had no money when she got married, so we don't touch it, never. I see. Twenty pounds. Are we talking about? More. Twenty-five. More. Thirty. No. More. Yes. Forty then. No. Am I getting warm? Warmer. Fifty. <laughs> no. We'll try sixty. Warm. Then what about seventy? Sixty-eight pound fifteen shillings and six pence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd call that a pretty tidy little sum. And where may I ask to keep it all? In the post office. Well, there are worse places. Well, Ralph, between us, it isn't in the post office. My mother tells me to say it is. That's all. It's a home. Is it? Mum doesn't trust banks or them sort of places, you see. But it's quite safe where it is. Well, it doesn't sound very wise. You're losing a. 
tidy bit of interest to begin with. And how much have you got on you tonight, pray? Enough to offer to pay for the drinks, I imagine. Ten pounds. It's for a new bag. This one's no good. The clasp's broken. Look. It looks all right to me. No, it isn't. You're only a man, so you wouldn't know. Ah. And the lining's all gone inside anyway. It certainly looks a bit worn. That beastly letter's still in there. I suppose I ought to put it in the fire. Oh, is it? Yes. Here it is. Still in the envelope. Of course. There must have been an envelope. Could I have a look? Here you are. You don't know the handwriting, do you? It's not your friend, Belle. It's very cleverly forged, if it is. Sorry. Here, keep that letter. For now. You never know. It's evidence, you see. I say, something's just struck me. Do you think you could do me a favour? What? Another two gin and its. Waiter? Oh, certainly, sir. What were you just saying? Well, the truth is, I've just realised... Rushing out to meet you, I totally forgot. Tomorrow morning, I've got to be up with the lark to go see an old uncle of mine over at Preston Park. He's a bit of a martinet, but he's absolutely rolling in tin. <laughs> and I'm hoping a lot of it's coming to me. So one's got to toe the line, if you see what I mean. Yes, I think so. It's terribly embarrassing and all that, but actually, I'm absolutely out of ready cash. Oh, are you? It's going to be the very devil tomorrow morning, hanging around for the bank to open and get to his place in time. I was wondering if you... I, I think it's an awful cheek, but... Well, I was wondering... No, no, it's too much to ask. How much are we talking about? Oh, only about two pounds or so. That way, I can go to the bank and draw some money out when I've left the old boy. So I could pay you back tomorrow evening. Uh, you can meet me tomorrow evening... Can't you? Well, I'm not quite sure. Oh, I don't want to press you. Esther, please forget I mentioned it. I'll manage. If I'm late for the old boy, he'll just have to lump. It's not that. It's just that I've got to buy the handbag with it. This one's a disgrace. Can't you put the new handbag off just for the day? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Forget I've said anything at all. No. You have the two pounds. There you are. That's really terribly nice of you. Thank you very much indeed. Not at all. It's a pleasure. I thought for a moment you didn't trust me. <laughs> Did you think I was going to <laughs> run off with your hard-earned savings or something? No, it was only the bag. Anyway, now you'll have to turn up tomorrow, won't you? If only to get your money back. Yes, of course. It was silly of me to make fuss... So we'll meet again, you and I, Esther Downs, at 7.30 tomorrow evening. Where? Why, on the West Pier, of course. Where else? Belle, there's, there's something I wanted to ask your advice about. Go you ahead, know, old boy. Well, it's about Esther Downs. Oh, the darling Esther, do say on. Yes. Yes, I've got rather keen on her, actually. I know it sounds, well... Holiday romance and all that. <laughs> well, I'm a bit smitten, I must admit. Yes, I rather fancy that Cupid's dart had struck home. I quote, Cupid and Compase played at cards for kisses. However, proceed. Well, I've had the most funny letter. Really? Yes. What kind of letter? Yeah. I think it's absolutely filthy. I ought to tear it up and uh, forget about it. Uh... Do not walk with or touch Miss Esther Downs. She suffers from a disorder from one who knows and only desires to help. I don't know much about these things, but it probably comes from some filthy creature who's jealous or something. Hmm, hmm. Could it be true? That's what bothers me. There are three young men and two young girls in our story... One of the girls is an innocent, one not quite so innocent. Of the three young men, one is innocent, one is not quite as innocent as he seems, and one is, well, I suppose you would call him evil, if there is such a thing as evil, which I am sure there really, emphatically, is. Of course, when you have heard the rest of this story, 
you may disagree. In The West Pier by Patrick Hamilton, the part of Gorse was played by Michael Sheen. Esther, Alison Pettit. Ryan, Julian Ryan Tutt. Belle, Robert Harper. Gert, Rachel Atkins. And Mrs. Downs, Carolyn Jones. The headmaster and the waiter, Johan Meredith. And the little boy was William Nichols Rose. The narrator was Alan Leith. The West Pier was adapted for radio by Alan Pryor. It was directed by Richard Workley and was a peer production for BBC Radio 4.